Woohoo! Good day! Welcome to the stream! Hello, everybody! Hello! <laughs> Welcome to the Three Sheets One Shot! I'm so glad you're here! And I'm so sorry we had our desktop mic off and you guys missed uh, Sir Mimsy talking to uh, Rylan and uh, Big Old Joe had, of course, his greeting. And mm -hmm. I know! And, um, Tessa, thank you so much for the subscription. I really appreciate it. I love you. <laughs> We're only one sheet in tonight, though, right? Joe, you've only had one drink? I'm, well, uh, I'm, I'm half a sheet, because I haven't finished this yet. But it's, you know, there's a lot here. So maybe if I finish it, that's two sheets. You've got to catch up, because I'm already done with one. I'm on my second. <laughs> oh, there he goes. He's good. We're good. All right, so you see we're on Ammonrath. I just did Ammonrath <coughs> as the general uh, title, because what are you drinking? I thought <coughs> you were, you're gin too, right? You're doing gin? Yeah, Yeah. but I mean, <coughs> it was designed to be sipped. And you gulped? Uh, well, you said catch up. <laughs> awesome. Hey, can you guys hear us okay, I hope? I really I can hope. hear you fine, yeah. Well, I know you can hear me, but can they hear me? Yes, they can. I had the I had the stream. Um... Ah, yeah, Rylan says he can hear us. Good. Thanks, Rylan. <laughs> awesome. Um, Wait, what? Rylan, you mean like you mean like doors open, bottle hand down, gone three seconds later? Yes, probably. If I know Rylan. Oh man. Loud and clear. Thanks, Tessa. <laughs> oh man. Okay, so. Um, okay, funny story, Joe. You're going to love this. Um, earlier today, I do what I always do. I have my checklist. See? Right here. Uh -huh. You can see my checklist. My fancy, dancy, handy, dandy checklist. And um, one of them is to check, of course, the OBS and check all my screens and everything. And I went and I pulled up the document. And I'm like, okay, let's see where we left off. Scroll, 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 scroll. Page 48, whatever it is. I can't remember. Hey, where's all the shit we wrote last week? Uh oh. Couldn't find it. I'm like, oh crap. But you know what? Good news is I have Microsoft, whatever latest version this is. Crow does all this for me. And I'm <laughs> like, I'll pull up the latest, the latest version or the, the history. So I scroll, scroll, scroll. Found uh, what was it last week? Uh, June 21st. Uh, sure. I'm like, oh, let's check that. Nothing. Nothing after the Proxus. Nothing after. Nothing after that island in the middle of our wa underground water feature that had uh, the skeleton on it and the palm tree and you know the little Pirates of the Caribbean Disney World type of thing. That's no good. Yeah, and I'm like, oh hey, I lost my stuff. What will oh, I ever hey. do? So, um. Oh hi, Mark. Yeah, and then I, uh, the Ginkgo Biloba kicked in, and I went, you know what, we went back in time, we, ret we retconned a bunch of stuff, and we wrote this last week stuff before the week before stuff. Uh-huh. So, hey, it's there, Problem. it's just on page 46 instead of page 48, or whatever. And as Rylan brings up a very good point, there's also yeah. the VOD. I, I could have rewritten it. I know. But I had notes and, you know, a bunch of stuff. I didn't really... I don't watch my own stuff. Are you kidding? Come on. I live yeah, it. I haven't unmuted a stream I've been on ever. <laughs> so I, I found it. We're good. It was just like my, you know, brain fart the other day about... Uh, what did I brain fart about? Something. I don't know. See? I'm doing it again. It's it's the it's the gin and tonic. I tell you what, that's kind of a double whammy though, isn't it? Because you've forgotten what you've forgotten I forgot about. What I forgot. Um 
Okay, so we're not gonna, except for that little, that little anecdote, we're not gonna go back too far. We, what we did was we retconned, and we went back thinking, we need to go back and say that our intrepid adventurers followed the correct timeline, didn't abandon their horse and cart outside the temple ruins, and went down into the Underdark, fought a bunch of, of uh, Duragar, and found that little Disney World island full of uh, mystery and mimics. Uh, we thought that maybe our intrepid adventurers would do the right thing. Would do the right thing, exactly. And so um, they, we went backward and called it the tenth door. See, uh -huh. I remember uh -huh. it's right there. Uh -huh. Yeah, and um, we did a bunch of brainstorming about that. So we need to talk more about Martha Moore, Duin, our uh, de our demigod, our dwarven. Neutral good demigod uh, who is a traveling type. Didn't you talk about that last time? Yeah, let me let me pull him up. Pull him, her, what, it, them up, and um, we need to find that tenth door. And we decided that um, someone said that. Oh, I think it was Del Mori. She was here with something about the steward of the elemental hall. Uh, oh, she said confluence of ley lines of the Proxus. It was a problem. Mm -hmm. It was a problem, right? We decided. Yes. He's not a necromancer, Rylan. We're not putting a necromancer in the title of this story. Nor is he a, is he a next romancer. <laughs> oh, that's a good idea, actually. I like that. We should call it that. <laughs> which I can only which I can only imagine is someone that uh, he he uh, raises things from the dead early. Like ne like he like he does that in advance. He's a next next romancer. Like next it's ne happening, romancer. It's, happening it's next. really bad. Yeah. yeah. It's happening next. I like that. We should we should. I'm gonna write that down. A next romancer. Oh, uh, I wouldn't. I also like cranial flatulence. That's awesome. We cranial flatulence is a good one. That might be needed to add. It might need to be added to the uh, Kajari dictionary. It, that one and next romancer. That's perfect. Okay, so so we're we're off to a great start on our next chapter, aren't we? <laughs> We have to, uh, we'll name the next chapter later, but right now we're going to put it uh, work in progress because um, I'll let you guys name it, but we need to come up with blah, 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 that goes there. The the Vigilant Next Romancer. Okay, the... I said it wasn't going to go in the title or the, the thing, <laughs> it, but it might if, if I'm overruled. Okay, so that's a work in progress. We're going to name that one at the end. What sounds the best title for this chapter coming up? All right, so... We've decided that um, our adventurers do have, um, they are attuned to entering the Proxus, right? Yeah, well, yes, but did we really lock down how that attunement happened? No, we haven't. We should do that. We should retcon our retcon. <laughs> well, it's not, I wouldn't call it retconning. We, we're just like, we're just filling in. We're filling in the blanks. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I like yeah. that. Okay. So, uh, um, I like so that. Do, you, do you want some more information on uh, Marth, Marth, Marth more yes, doing? Yes, I do want that. Let me let me get back up here to my notes. Let's go ahead. Hit me with it. Uh, so, uh, neutral good is yep. his alignment. Got that. His symbol is an upright mace in front of a boot, a tall boot. Okay. Although I, th I think they meant to say that his his symbol is an upright mace rampant on a tall boot. That's how when you're dealing with shields and and, and heraldry and stuff. Okay. But it's not important. That's just me being pedantic. No, no, uh, no. I'll put rampant. I, I like to use fancy big words. It makes me feel smart. Rampant. His portfolio. Yes. Is wanderers, lightning, and roads. His specific uh, spell domains. So, like, if you were a cleric of uh, Martha, Martha, mm -hmm. doing. Yep. It's that second M that throws me off because it's not. Martha it's not, Moore. Just yeah. go Martha Moore. Moore, like mm, good. Yeah. yeah, it makes you. It, it's a really nice uh, way to make you make your voice slow down because it's Martha Moore doing. Yes, um, I like that. So his domains, if you were if you were a cleric of him, uh, was is um. Nature and trickery, which I love the trickery domain. Yes, it's, that's perfect. It's got great spells in it. Yep. Uh, his um, uh, 
the typical worshippers are dwarves, rangers, uh, expatriates, and guides. So there's some wiggle room there. That's pretty good. Yeah, that's great. And his particular channel divinity. Well, well, uh, look what the cat right <laughs> Hey, Rainick. Hey, Rainick. So glad you could join us tonight. Thank you. All right, expats, guides, and what? Uh, uh, rangers and dwarves. I got that. Yep. Um, and so if you were to be a cleric of him and you were to channel divinity, it would manifest as uh, charm animals and plants, uh, invoke duplicity or cloak of shadows. I like so that. I think I think he is a uh, a very very uh, appropriate god. I like this. He's also called the Finder of Trails. Okay. Ooh, not Watcher the of Wanderers. Okay. Finder of Trails. Ooh, I like mm -hmm. that. What is yeah, it? Yeah, I really like that one. Uh, he's also called the Watcher over Wanderers, which Ooh. is a little too wordy. I think it's a little too heavy in the mouth to say that. It's a, a lot of W's in there. Yeah. Or he's called the Watchful Eye. <gasps> Ooh. I like that. We should go somewhere with that. There needs to be some sort of eye symbol in the process. Um, although I do like Finder of Trails. That's the ranger coming out in me. Mm -hmm, I mm -hmm, do like mm -hmm. that a lot. So we should go with, maybe we should go with Finder of Trails. As, well, I don't know. We'll go with all of them some, some way. All right. So we've got, Mar how do you pronounce it again? You're the dwarf of our group. Mar Martha Morduin. Martha Morduin. I love it. Okay. Uh, and is, is he a demigod or full-blown god? He is, let me so find him. I had a little him. question mark here and I wasn't sure. He is a young, neutral, good, dwarven god of wanderers. Okay, so Demi's out of there. Sorry, Debbie Moore. Oh, that's where the Moore Demi comes Moore. from. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Demi Martha Moore. Yeah, there you go. Uh, dwarven, neutral, good god. Okay. And um, we've decided that he has seen or foreseen that the oh, Proxus is dying. Oh. What? What? So, he has been known to take a uh, physical form on the material plane. Okay, as a? As a dwarf called Muaman Duathol. Okay, you're gonna have to spell that slowly for me. <laughs> Hold on. A physical form on the material plane as a, as a dwarf named, what? M U A. Okay. M M A N. So two M's. Yep. D U A T H A L A L. Is that all one word or is that two words? I put it's two words. I put it in chat there. Oh, you did, didn't you? Muhammad Dwathal. Dwath Dwathal? Say it again. Yeah. Yeah. Muhammad Dwathal. Okay. Which um, God, that's such a cool name. It I is love a that. Great name. We should, uh, what are the, what, uh, let's describe this guy. Does he have um, a description? Does he have like a, I mean, like his, the color of his eyes or hair? Does it have a beard? Is he stout? Is he tall? Is he, what is he? Not, not terribly. Um, Cause I'll need to, well, the DM will need to describe if they ever, if we decide that they come across, our adventures come across this, this God of the Proxus. Uh, what it would look like. Average dwarf height. Thanks, Rylan. Uh, uh, heavy in the mouth if you've just finished going. shaking. Yep, okay. You keep going and I'll do a little research okay. into him. Average I'm dwarf couple... hair and eye color are all average. Good, Rylan. You're, you're, the, you're the best helper tonight. So, okay. So, um, but we haven't decided how they're attuned, right? That's what we were getting at. Yes. Uh, sorry, I, I just, I just. No, no, um, this is great. This is great. This is. This, we needed that information anyway, so that's a good way to start out the night. Um, how would the chat, unsuspecting dwarf, yes, with neutral or average? He's average height. Has average eyes. Has average nose. Has average he's, mouth. He's somewhere between four foot three and six foot two, depending on which gas station he's robbing at the time. No, there you go. Just... Yeah. There you go. So uh, let's let our chat to side how should how should the attunement go how should our um intrepid adventurers be attuned to allow themselves to get into the process um i was thinking hey chief hi chief tonight. 
Thank you for joining us. <laughs> I miss that smiling face. <laughs> there you go. There's your Sir Mimsy greeting. Thank you for being a sub. Also, I wonder if it's worth considering whether or not the in attunement is a key point of the story or if it's an afterthought. Uh, well, I would. I, afterthought's a good word. What I what I what I think I, I actually what I think I mean in addition to that is if the attunement happens as a result of something or because or um, needs to happen for something else. You know what I mean? Like, yeah. does the story pivot on the attunement or does the story lead you to the attunement? I I know what you're saying. Okay. Um, well, that's what I was getting at. Should the attunement be that they have to acquire an item or be blessed by a god or um, fulfill a prophecy or uh, do some good deed, some bad deed, probably a good deed. Um, oh, there's Lily. Hey, Lily. I'm uh, glad you've turned up, mate. Now we can begin. There's your greeting for being a sub, Lily. Welcome. Um... Let's see. Um, oh, well, it's Friday, Chief, so you just just ignore that old manager and enjoy your weekend coming up. It's Friday. It's Friday. Friday. No, let me sing. Um, so, okay. Um, what do you think? What does the chat think? Should it be a uh, an item that they must find? They're actually going to be searching for other items, so maybe that wouldn't be the, the thing to attune. Um, it could be an item that was given to them. And they have to prove themselves worthy to carry the item or something? Well, that's, well, while chat discusses amongst themselves and with us, yes. I'm going to have a quick, I'm going to have a quick mosey over to TV Tropes because um, I really like using it for, um, that's a great idea. For things like you this. You do that so, and I will um, keep vamping until they come up with something. How about that idea? Hey, guess what's happening? Not this coming weekend, which is tomorrow. And not the weekend after, which it's not, but the weekend after, which is Saturday, July 13th at 6 o'clock, guess what's happening? What's that? Tell me. I didn't add it to the screen, so I can't even show you, but we're doing a Bob Ross challenge here on Curious Crafts. Got to make a nice little, whole bunch of nice little happy I little totally trees there. I meant to do a little... A little image thing, and I forgot to put it on the screen. Oh, well. Hey, um, but we're doing a Bob Ross challenge. Del Mori and Drake and Clover are all going to dress up like Bob Ross and try to paint along. As we raise <laughs> That's going to be amazing. I know. It's going to be so much fun. Um, as we raise funds for our D&D um, &D with the Banana Brothers coming this fall to you uh, here on Twitch. Hey, speaking of that... Um, I don't know if you noticed, I, I took it off the screen, um, but I'll put it back on. Um, look at that cute little Mimsy in an egg. Isn't he just adorable? Del Mori drew that for me. Um, hey, I'm, I'm going to be doing a, a show called Mimsy's Whimsy, and for the next probably two weeks, it's going to be for everybody to see. I, I'm just going to pop in. I'm not even going to advertise. I'm just going to pop in online and work on a craft project, probably terrain, probably D&D based. Uh, it might be about, I might be editing the story. I don't know. It's just going to be a uh, non-scheduled, non-pressure, just kind of feel like streaming. Just do it. Stream. Um, but then after two weeks, guess what? Mimsy's Whimsy will be for subscribers only as part of my bonus content program. So woohoo, if you're a subscriber, I will see you watching these shows. <laughs> um, okay, so I've vamped long enough, so it's your turn now, Joe. Well, what so let's look at well, let's look at what we're doing. Um, you know what I sound like? I sound like a newscaster. <laughs> let's turn it over to Joe out in the field. Joe, go. what do you got? Joe, Not much, got? Bob. No. Um, <laughs> so we need. I think what we should look at is what tropes are already in place. And I say tropes. Tropes aren't a bad thing. They're they're used over and over and over again because they work. They work a lot. Except for the um, jump the shark. We want to avoid the jump the shark. Jump the shark is a bad one, right. but jump the shark has its place. Um, you can use jump the shark yes. in a comedic setting to of to, uh, to illustrate a turn. Uh, but so we're looking at um, yes. a little bit of a MacGuffin, a, a bit. Okay. Uh, 
we're I don't know if we're actually looking at an artifact of doom because we hasn't we haven't really talked about what they're gonna go get but that we could we could be looking at an artifact of doom okay uh but as far as attunement I, I think I might have come up with a couple of interesting ones let's let's take some notes what are they let me find the one I've got a bullet point ready to go with your name on it so there's I'm just gonna rattle these off my head. I don't know if uh, these will actually work too well. Okay. Um, you've got the damsel in distress trope. Okay. Um, and we actually have a damsel that would work on that. It could mm -hmm, be it mm -hmm. could be Hilda. Hilda Grimstout, the uh, the the dwarf that they found in the Duragar camp that's being who's being held prisoner. She is the wife of Dury Emberstone, who is the current thane of Direbrook. Yeah, no, that could, so that could that, actually work. That might work. I'll put and the little... thing, the thing about the damsel in distress trope is that it's it acts as a hub to spin off into several other, not niche, but several other optional right. tropes like um, like uh, the decoy damsel or the defiant captain or a uh, captive or the uh, the self assurance. Uh, uh, you know what I mean? Yep. The problem with the it. problem I think with um, damsel in distress is that sometimes well f first of all the fact that the damsel is the um the fact that the damsel is the uh, um uh what's the word i'm looking for the uh um the kick off the jump off the reason for going and doing the thing right and is a bit uh, a bit um uh patronizing well that and we don't know that they'll actually find someone like that down there so there has to be a yeah. reason for them to go down there so maybe that won't work i'll put a double question mark there because we don't know for sure if that's why they're going to go down there mm -hmm. um the, you could maybe use i like that chief i'm going to put damsel or knight in distress it could be either one yeah absolutely oh, could. It absolutely could in this case it could be del thanor mason yeah. remember yep yep there we go. No, no not got... patronizing. Right, <laughs> right. Either way. I... <laughs> Thank you, Rylan. Either way, the use of the of the damsel in distress, either it's a damsel or a reverse damsel. Yep. Uh, it it makes the hero's implications for going or reasons for going, um, not of their own volition. Like they didn't go because they have the strength of their own will. You yeah, know what I'm saying? Yeah, There's yes. somebody else out there that's spurring them to go on, which right. sometimes could be bad. If it, maybe not. Um, so we could use that, but you said you have other bullet points. So yes, let me let me keep we'll looking. Oh, uh, look at you putting all my my channels up there. Thank you, Discord especially. Hey, and uh, Fletcher, if you're watching, join Discord, please. Discard? Discord. Discard. Discard is. You guys want to order in Discard? We're not, we're not Super <laughs> fun there. <laughs> We're not, playing, we're not playing cards. Go out to the ice floor there, go to the uh, fish in there, and the discard, yeah. Uh, so, uh, since they're going to find the but MacGuffin... your name is Inga, you're from Sweden. <laughs> but you're no, from Lederhausen. Uh, so, since they're going to find what is effectively a MacGuffin, or several MacGuffins, however yes. we want to do this, yes. uh, a method of attunement could be the MacGuffin Guardian. Uh, Someone please that... tell me what MacGuffin means, because I have no clue what he's talking about. So, the MacGuffin. Let's go back and talk about the MacGuffin here. Let me find the MacGuffin. <laughs> it's... The MacGuffin is the name given to an item that advances the plot, specifically. It's a hinge point okay. for the plot required to unlock something or get into something. I did a one-shot one time where they had to go and rescue a person, and that person was very magically infused and he okay. was needed to unlock the gate to go through and he was his name was literally Barry McGuffin. Oh, okay, gotcha. All right. Um so so a MacGuffin is any item that the uh players need to to, to take the story from one point from one significant point to another point. Okay, so that was sort of what I was going with when I brought this up for the attunement and maybe they needed a magical item to get to the door maybe and it could have just been handed to them or maybe they have to find it maybe they prove themselves worthy to carry it yeah yeah okay. yeah and so right. um you've, you've got things like the MacGuffin guardians the threshold guardians um 
That, I think, though, that won't work because the MacGuffin comes significantly after the attunement, unless I'm forgetting, unless I've got my order backwards. So I've typed all this, and both of them you've said uh, neither of them will work. Well, they may. I'm just not. I'm not. <laughs> I'm kidding. Uh, it, it depends on how flexible we will be. I'm just. I'm just. Right. I'm just throwing stuff out. I'm co-hosting. You. 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 You call. Oh you call. sure. Throw me under that bus. I gotcha. I see how it is. <laughs> no, that's fine. You're right. Um. So if we. Okay. Let's say. Well, oh. Uh, how, Rylan's this, got I, it. Wait. Hold on. Rylan's got it. He says I've got it. Okay. Hit us. They need to find a key for the door. All right. He's this talking, is going to be typing. something to do with necromancers. It's, it's good. If it's a necromancer, I swear, Rylan, I'm going to climb through this screen. The key is under a rock next to the door. Okay. okay. This is going to be epic. It's going to go one of two ways. I, I, I'm finding myself climbing through the screen straight to Rylan's neck. I mean, don't room. worry. I'll, I'll see him in a couple of weeks. Okay, thanks. And then the key's under... Oh, that's it? The key's under... Oh, that's oh. it. Okay, so oh. if, how about it's a rock-shaped key holder that underneath they just click it to the left and then pull out the key and, yeah. All right, yeah. so put him in timeout. Let's start again. <laughs> Anyone else in chat want to come up with a great way to attune this item? Uh, this one might actually work, depending on how many people are in the party. Now, you know that the Banana Brothers are already going to be playing it, so you know how many people... How many, how many um, points they have in int? Yeah, I'm ready. Uh, it's called the Rule of Seven. Rule of Seven, okay. And it goes as I quote here. Okay. Right after, right after three, seven is the most commonly used ominous number in fiction. It can be tracked back to the ancient times. Just think of the Seven Wonders, Seven Days of Creation, Seven, seven Hells of Rome. Right. It's also very common in a lot of fairy tales. In the natural world, one of the origins of the significance comes from the seven celestial bodies that could be seen with the naked eye. Okay. The sun, moon, the planets, and the Saturn. Yep. That were all worshipped as deities in the days named after them the week. The way it works in, as a trope, is you are missing one of... I could never spell deities right. <laughs> Go ahead. Oh, you, you're missing one of the one of the group so this wouldn't be a, a, a textbook rule of seven it'd be a rule of there's four is that right there are, there are ten doors remember the ten we're searching for the tenth door no, no no in this case the rule of seven applies to the people the main characters in the story oh i see okay uh, so four, yeah so in uh let's see let me find myths and religion Wait, there's math i was told that there would be no math <laughs> well, this is really simple math. The point being is that there's one less than the number you need. And that's how they attune. They find that missing member of their party. Chief, if you've ever heard me sing, you would say that all levels of my singing are deadly, so you're fine. <laughs> um, okay, so... What? And then upon, a fi upon finding that person, which could be our... What was his name? Let me find his. Let's find his name. Uh, Muamman Duathal. Yes, which could be Marthram or Duin in physical form. Okay. Find him, save him. Hey, welcome to, welcome to the, uh, welcome to the party. You are now attuned. It's not. Yeah, Rylan. That's really, really uh, similar to the Rule of Seven. Okay, so we could do that, and we could say that um, that four of them. Four of them can get to the door, and it's it looks like it should work, but they're missing someone, and they have to find they have to, maybe they have to find themselves worthy of this person. But they're going to be underground. That's that's the thing. They're going to be way underground, and they're being sent there to find the tent. So it's like the people who are sending them um, are attuned, and they should let them know how they can be attuned. Right. Sure, yeah. So, yeah. if that's the case, then we could go with the MacGuffin, which is the item required to advance the plot, mm -hmm. and have uh, probably um, Galera, Queen Galera, uh, give them each, give each member of the party a piece of the key. But the key doesn't have to be a, like, like a key for a lock. It could be some puzzle piece and, and it's only four of five 
and she'll say she'll even say you you now hold four of the five pieces you need for entry into the proxis you will need to prove yourselves worthy by finding blank to receive the fifth key something like that uh if if we didn't want to be so explicit, it, it could take the form of an expository story. Like uh, like she could be just telling them uh, history, like this oh, happened yeah. years yeah. ago, and there were five heroes with five keys to attune themselves. Oh, I love that idea. Praxis. And lo and behold, we need to get into the praxis. Wait, we've only got four. We gotta go find number five. Or well, how? They, I'm only using four and five because that's how many units. However many play the one shot after it's published, it would just be one right. more than. Who were the first two? I say Queen Galera Faybright tells the story of the five blank, and we're gonna let our our chat come up with the, what they're called. Not musketeers, not minions, some good word. Uh, they're heroes who were the first to uh, discover the, um, the the Proxus or just uh, or, or just the last time the Proxus needed to be accessed. I don't know. Like This could be oh, a generation okay. thing. This could be an, an epoch thing. Yes. Who were the oh, last yeah. to open um uh, oh, Five, how about the ninth it. door? They were the they were the ones heroes who opened the ninth door. But that doesn't make sense. How do the other doors get open? Well, it could be vestiges, champions. Yep, I like mm -mm. that. See if there's a word. Go to thesaurus and or literative word that start that starts with an F. The five fellows or the five. Fur, fur bogs. Yeah, I nope, know. I think that nope, nope, I'm sorry, I think we're gonna have to take that last answer. I like the wardens. Five... I like wardens too. <laughs> wardens work. Free folk. Wardens. I like free folk. Free folk. Five free folk. Um, five French fries. French Freemasons? No, not Freemasons. Five, five French Freemasons. Like French, oh. French fries. How about French free fry masons? Free, well, let's look for cinnamon. Bring it. Bring it. Brigandine. Heroes uh, who uh, not opened but found. Oh boy, hands on the wrong keys. Found entry. Uh, who first found entry into the Proxus? The Rorora Proxus. Fortniters? No. No. That's worse than Necromancers. Founders. Uh, I like founders. Well, founders works. Founders, uh, forerunners. Yeah. Um, yeah. Forebearers. Uh. Well, actually, they're called the um, once they get inside. Oh, wait a minute. If you go back, oh, I have to go back in time. Um, isn't it? Since we're working with elementals. Mm -hmm. Let's go back to our basics of our the history of Amonrath. Fire, earth, air, water. Okay? So, there's four elementals, so four should probably be the number. Um, they found... Yeah, it's a Toyota Forerunners. That's great. Um, so, they're given... Ooh, ooh, that's it! I got it, I got it, I got it, I got it! They're given the air, the earth, and the water uh, mm -hmm. keys, whatever they are. Um, the fire, the fire one, must be forged somewhere in a in a dark iron forge, in a dwarven forge somewhere. Okay. And and guess what? The Duragar are are happen to have a forge, so they've opened the other doors with forges elsewhere, but now they have to backtrack maybe through the tunnels and have the fire up the forge there and get the fourth key to work. 
Okay. Something like that. Yeah. I'll, 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 um, I'll say four. The four... It starts with a five, or an F also, so the four... You know what we should do? We should steal from Diablo. Why don't we call them Key Wardens? Sure. There you go, Diablo. Ha ha, we stole that from you. I need more to drink. Mm. Four Key Wardens. Uh, heroes who found the first entry in the Proxus by... Forging keys out of the basic four elements. Water, air, uh, earth, and, whoopsie, and the final one, fire, which had to be forged. Ooh, yeah, it has to be forged separately for each door because after it's used, it 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 goes away, melts or disappears or something. Because there is a, there is an issue in this world of Ammonrath with the fire god, with the fire mountain or the, the fire mountain, the fire volcanic uh, original god that helped form Ammonrath. We would need heart to summon Captain Ammonrath as well. You there need you fire, go. water, earth. Or uh, maybe just all the lucky charms. Just, you know, yellow moons, green clovers, blue guys. And a rest. <laughs> okay, which had to be forged. Um, has to be forged. For each, for entry into each door. Okay. I like that. Um, but, but the, the fire key has to be forged <laughs> by some sort of magical fire in the, in located in the area where that door is, which means the Duragar camp makes sense. Cause then they'd have to go and, um, Right, they'd have to they have to use that forge as part of the the uh, entry into it. Yay, nay. Well, what if they had the forge, but it was just a regular old forge because they didn't have the other keys? But now, when the other keys are at the forge, the forge fires up the right way, and it can be used. I see. So you're saying that um, all ten doors into the Proxus, uh, somewhere near that door is a forge, but it takes the three keys that they already have to fire it up to create the fourth key. Is that what you're thinking? Yes, and we're, we're on the very bleeding edge of something called contrived coincidence, but... I think <laughs> you're still looking at that site? <laughs> I, think we'll be, I think we'll be okay. Okay, all right. Near each... Uh, door into the I'm gonna give, I'm gonna give you this website when we're all yeah, done. Yeah, please um, put a link on um, in my Discord for everyone to enjoy. That's that's great. Near each door into the Proxus, or near in the vicinity of. Each door into the Proxus. Captain Ammonrath. I had an interview today, did I tell you? You did not tell the people watching the stream. <laughs> Which means I told you. <laughs> I was interviewed by uh, Shiny Kiwi today. She's a creator with Nerdsmith. And uh, it was a lot of fun. And we just we just talked on and on and on about a variety of things. And, and um, I was going somewhere with this. Oh, at the end, she asked me a very important question. She asked Which, me a very important question. She said it, in fact, at the beginning of the interview, she said it was going to be the most important question of the interview. She wouldn't tell me it, what it was. Saved it till the very last. Was it, was it University of Kentucky or University of UL? Or was it like close. Michigan or Ohio? Or? It was Michigan always. It was close. No, it's Ohio always. Uh, sorry, it's Michigan. I'm, I'm, just, I'm just kidding. I don't, I don't <laughs> You don't really give a shit. I know. <laughs> Go sports ball team! <laughs> um, it's always, I was going to do 
Right. Right. <laughs> I know you're watching right now. I know you go half a year on this stream. Uh, no, it was um, it was Wonder Woman or Captain Marvel. Oh, uh, oh, ooh, oh. that's a hard one. I, I, I didn't even finish letting her talk, and guess what I said? Mar Captain Marvel. Of Just course. guessing. Cap oh my gosh. Yeah. I did that online. Um, you know that online uh, thing where you stop the gift to see who your Marvel parents were. Oh yeah, yeah. yeah. Uh, Captain Marvel was my mom. Uh huh. And guess who was my dad? You're gonna love uh, it. Groot. How did you know that? Did I tell you that? Was it really Groot? Yeah, no, it was just a blind guess. It was just a blind guess. It was Groot. I got, I got I'm that. Part did that. awesome and part tree, apparently. I got that, and I got um, Black Panther and Tony Stark. I can see that. I would. That would be awesome. Are you kidding me? That'd be that amazing. Would be awesome. That'd be. That'd be very amazing. Yeah, that'd be that'd be really good. Two tech geniuses, two bajillionaires. Uh, yeah, you'd be you'd be set for life. Yeah. Okay. So in the where door, into the in, in the vicinity of each door into the Proxus, there lies. Oh, there's a nice. A a what is it called? A forge. A a, a better word for forge or or some word descriptive. Legendary Forge. Ooh, Legendary Forge. Let me just fire up the source again. Legendary Forge. Uh, with which, look at me using my grammar. The, uh, the nope. key wardens must, must, much, um, nope. uh, not develop, create, create the fourth key. Uh, this is with the water. Whoops, water, <laughs> water, 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 air, earth. See what happens when you drink, folks. You can't type. Don't drink. Don't drink and type. With the water, air. Earth and Damn. newly forged fire key, the adventurers will become attuned and be allowed access into correct spelling the process. Yay! How's that? Progress. We did it! We wrote a paragraph and some bullet points. The Saurus does not like to give me uh, synonyms for the noun forge. It only gives me. Unless am I spelling it? No, no, I'm not, I'm not spelling it wrong. You ever look at a word for so long and so many times that it stops looking like the word it should be? Hey, it looks wrong. Like, like forge of, now. Like of forge should be U V of. Right. Of. Of. You. Uh, synonyms. See, and it corrects me with in the vicinity of, it's going to say something like near. <laughs> See? And I didn't like that. I had near before, and I put in the vicinity of, and it's telling me that it's, I don't know. I don't know, Clark. Okay, so, um, remember guys, we used to write the story, now we just do brainstorming. Because it would be long, long and boring if I just sat here and and typed out once upon a time. This yes. is more exciting. We can we can get a bunch of fun brainstorming ideas onto the paper, and then editing comes later, and it fixes it all. And also this way, it doesn't spoiler alert the uh, the banana yeah. brothers who should be watching. I don't know where any of them are. I don't see tranquil. They're all too busy writing, like they're, 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 they're quickly taking notes. I don't know, I don't see Nchoku or Tranquil or, I don't know. But then, you know what, maybe it's a good thing, because... <sighs> Tranquil's probably off making, um, miniatures. Probably. No, that's, uh, Actually, that's... you know what, I think Tranquil's out of town. Oh. So maybe that's where he is, okay. Alright, is it warm down here, is it just me? I'm probably having another hot flash. I looked that up today. How to avoid hot flashes, and they, it's like hormonal stuff. Whew. 
Backup banana brother. I know, I know. Thank you, Rylan. Rylan is our backup banana brother. Except I'm pretty sure that's not the duty she wanted. Uh, well, I don't know, maybe. Duty? Oh, not that, I, no, not that duty. Yeah. Uh, I just read it. Please. I know, I drink in Excel. I drink in Word. I drink in Excel. I drink, I drink in... Uh, the basement? I drink in the basement. Drink in the front room? No, I'm, tr I'm drinking fireworks. You guys don't. I, everyone uses Photoshop. I grew up on Adobe. I, I use Dreamweaver for website development and I use fireworks for my art. So uh, everyone who's like, just Photoshop that, I'm like, you mean fireworks? Because that's what I use. Um, that's the duty she's getting. I know. That's what I are, we not, uh, are we not actually talking about imbibing? Am I missing something in the conversation? Does drink mean something else in this context? No, it means drink. It means like cheers, cheers. <laughs> Yummy. All right. So um, now they have access. They are attuned. Now they can get through that tenth door. Yes. And get into the um, without their cranial flatulence. Get into the proxies. Now, work in progress. Uh, this is what. I, I have. I would like to put something to. I would like to put something to to, to chat. Yes. When, when yes. dear chat, my dearest chatty chat friends, uh, when you are looking up stuff for your D and D games, how much validity do you give one D four chan the Wikipedia? Um, because I found an exhaustive article on Martha Morduin. Okay. But I don't know how reputable the one D four chan dot org wiki actually is so oh, i put I that, that at how uh much would you trust it uh, anyway sorry let's get back on let's get back on well on i would look on D, D beyond or is it not there oh uh, said a, zero yeah i i get i get a i get a feel um for zero uh because I, I think anybody could just write on yeah they could just basically say what they want to say on there oh no, I, said, oh, I said one d you said he stopped listening. Yeah. You have to get his attention. Yeah. No, it's fine. Here, I'll get his attention. Mm. Oh. Ooh. All right. Well, the, the the official Forgotten Realms has a. Uh, yeah, we can we can look that one. We'll do it. We'll do the official Forgotten Realms. Yeah. All right. So work in progress. They are now in the Proxus. Let's describe it. What does this Proxus look like? It is the very center. The door opens. It doesn't open to a tunnel or a trail or it's the center of our ley line connective proxis. It's our nexus. Um, what? Describe it. Is it like the train station in Harry Potter? Or is it like Dante's Inferno? Or is it... Did you see that fly that just flew past my screen? No. Is it like riding Falcor and it's all wind and mist and groundless and you're just floating? Let's just I have a, I have a feeling it should be like all like a the confluence of elements. Like they should all be represented there, or maybe all of them except fire. Since fire was bad and got kicked out. I like that. I like that a lot because that's what it is. Because eventually, once you settle in the Proxus, you have a choice of four hallways that you go down. And they are representative of each of the elements. So is it like the phone booth in Bill and Ted? Exactly, Rylan. That's exactly what I was trying to get with. Um, yes. So, okay. So let's take, all right, let's take the best... The best thing about each element. What is the best? The best, I'll capitalize that. The best of each element. What could that be? Uh, water. What's the best thing about water? Uh, Wet. It's, it, it could be cool. It's, yeah, um, it's refreshing. Refreshing. Okay, I'm going to write that it's down. It's restorative. Uh, it... it, it uh, uh, thank you, Rylan. I'll put wet. Um, it's 
I like I like restorative because it is vital. Yes, rehydrates exactly. Yeah, where's where's Chief? I need her to tell me that we all need to rehydrate. Um, all right. So, what are the best things about Earth? I like life giving. What else? What's the best Earth thing about is, Earth? Uh, Earth is uh, strong and it's a it's a bedrock. It's a foundational That's material. That's a good type. Yep. It provides uh, a foundation. You're exactly right, Joe. Thank you. It's used to grow crops, so yep. it's, life it's giving. nourishing, life-giving. All right. Supportive. Supportive. Yes. That's a good one. That's a good one. How, how, oh, I was like, I spelled nourishing wrong, and it took a while to supportive. Nor I sighing. Nourishing. Uh, okay, so what's the best thing about air? Obviously, it's uh, for breath. You can breathe it. What else about air? Um, air's, uh, air's harder. Why is air harder? Because it's nebulous. <laughs> it's it's. <laughs> you guys are saying the same thing over and over. Like you guys are repeating each other almost exactly. He's like, I'm out. <laughs> uh, let's see. So. The thing about air is it's transitional. It's um, it's a uh, transportational. It's a uh, yes, yes, definitely with the flying. Uh, it provides well. It provides a oxygen. Yeah, it provides in a basic Earth, capital E Earth atmosphere. It provides an atmosphere. Air provides a breath of life. That's a very good, uh, it's a very good uh, combination of words, Rylan. See, you're back. You are back, Rylan. You can't go pain because you have to help us with this. All right. So now, fire. What would be the, what would be the benefit of fire? We all know that there's benefits to fire. Oh, we can't. Well, wait. it's to cook. destructive in a good way. Yes. Uh, it uh, brings about new life from the destruction of its own fire. Uh, from, from from its from its own fire, like its, its fire destroys and like new life Phoenix. comes from the destruction. Yep. It provides warmth, yes. Uh, the feeling of safety and security, like if you're holding the torch. Yes. Oh, light. The possession of it grants a certain degree of power. Warmth. Warmth. Yeah, I like I like the uh, the warmth and the light. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Um. Because I feel like there should be a power aspect to yes, it as well. I think so too. I put power on there. Just from what we've established as the, the, the falling out between the four elements. Exactly. Exactly. Um, okay. All right. So um, oh. when they land, oh. when the, oh, why did I put a big space in there? You guys can't even read that. Let me scroll, scroll, scroll. Get rid of that line there. It goes a little slower when I've got a bunch of things going. All right. When the adventurers finally travel through uh, the door to the Proxus, they find themselves in an area um, with many, oops, many, uh, what is it called when uh, uh, you can feel Things that assault their senses. Um, well, I mean, you put a, you, you kind of hit the nail on the head like that. Um, there, it's sensory. Uh, well, it's um, yes. This is in an area. Um, it uh, it assails their senses. Uh, um, it's uh, maybe it overloads their senses. Like there's too much going on. It's hard to make. It's hard to make sense of everything. Yes. Uh, assaulted with an overload of, I said, uh, when the adventurers finally f travel through the door to the Proxus, they find their senses assaulted with an overload of, uh, are you, uh, the words you're looking for is, um, oh, come on. You got stimuli. it. Stimulus. Stimulus. Stimuli. Thank you. Stimuli. Um, a... <sighs> A warm this is a hard job. I don't want to be the co-host. You got to think of words. And... 
Brain's having to work more than it normally does. Out of all the applicants I got for this job, I chose you because I knew yes. you were the best at this. So and I am honored to do it. But gosh, if there's not smoke coming out of my ears, whew. <laughs> Good to get the, it's good to get the gears going again, though. It does. It, you know, it's like I said, that ginkgo biloba kicks in, and and we're good. And then we'll have another drink. That's what I need to take before the stream. I know. Ginkgo every, biloba. Every night I take one. Um, but I'm old, so. Um, okay, so an overload of stimuli. A warm, gentle breeze. That takes care of... Ooh, let's do that with all of them. Uh, a warm, gentle breeze. That takes care of air and fire. Um... That is absolutely true, Rylan. A breath. Oh, let's see. Uh, like a sea mist, like a like a like a uh, um. A you know, how water breaks across rocks, and you get like a mist in your face. Sea mist, uh, gently caressing. Hang on now. Their face. So okay. All right. That's true. Uh. They're not all um. They don't have, all have to be mixed in the same. A warm, gentle breeze, a soft sea mist. I already said gentle. Uh, Do you know what? Um, I think that the warm breeze, yeah. like the like the the hot air of the middle of summer, yeah, I think that should be fire. Right. That's, that's what I'm thinking. Yeah. Well, here's 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 my thing. Here's my thinking. I think that the 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 mist is obviously water. Yep. But then I think for air, you ever been, um, you ever like been driving in a car and the the driver's side window is cracked and the back passenger side window is also cracked and there's this weird reverberation that happens. Yeah. Has that ever happened? So I think that should be hitting them as well, like the pressure change between the opening door and the the room itself the process itself okay would would kind of like um uh, reverberate on them so a um a i'm not using my words right a reverberation of air refreshing fills their lungs mhm mm and perhaps they and perhaps they could feel like a tremor under their feet okay uh, a reverberation of uh, what's a good revert? Like a good douse of air. I'm just gonna put air for now, but we'll fill it in. And um, and their feet um <laughs> land on. Take like a draft, breeze, puff. Um, yeah. Well, I'm trying to think of uh something about a reverberation of what kind of air oh, oh, oh of of is it is it does it have a flavor to it does it have a um, we don't want to use warmth or cold or anything like that but like uh, of not flavorful but something uh, pungent well that kind of to me, pungent means it has a Sticky. odor, yeah, uh, like a, a, a negative odor. Mm. Um, I'll have to probably, probably come back to that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Reverberation of air fills their lungs and their feet land on... Uh, uh, I, think, I think that what their feet should land on yeah. are these earthen islands maybe not more than about 20 feet in diameter yep. and they they transport themselves from a, a like a like a pool with the, they, they float along the pool and at a certain point they're they're lifted up by air they come around and they can they complete a circle and go back down into the water again and they, they're like uh, so there's 10 gates right so what if there's 10 concentric circles that go around yeah, in it. the water and, and they're lifted up by the air you know so so yes. so you know or yeah i'm going to be able to explain everything by simply moving my hands like this yeah i'm lost what prox on <laughs> prox off so all right on solid 
earthen islands. Um, and maybe the, maybe the or earthen a, a islands solid, could And then right. land on a solid earthen island. Surrounded. 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 That <laughs> works for me. Works um, for me. You know what you mean? Oh, fathomless depth. Depths. 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 Fathom. Fathomless. F A T H O M L E S S. Depths. A P T H S. Um, really earning my keep now. Let's, let's go. go. Come on, throw more words. So they, thank you. So they land on it. How, let's say how big it is. Let's say it's um, 15 by 15 or bigger, 20 by 20. Well, I mean, if there's to be any combat in here, um, I, 15 by 15 would work good, but I don't think there's going to be combat. No, there shouldn't be combat, but it should yeah. be big enough for them not to panic about trying to not fall off. Oh, oh hey, what's, wait. What's so the Proxus is kind of the center, center of the world, world right? Yes, yes. So, so what, what if these concentric circles are the world engine itself? Like, they, they keep the rotation and balance of the Earth by their own rotation. So they, so, so this whole thing sits inside of, like, a coliseum, or, you know, like, it sits at the bottom of a coliseum, or, or an arena or something, or, like, a, like a, um, congress, you know what I mean? Yes, like, yes. And then in the middle of it is this giant pool of this fathomless depth of water, and then the earthen uh this the the earthen islands yes. rotate between the water and the air and there's 10 concentric circles yes and, and i really like that idea i do too we should do that 10 concentric cir circles i'm gonna write it down um and we just blew rowland's mind hey do you remember playing uh destiny where <laughs> where destiny 2 where you'd go on i forget what which one it is it's one of those um you know, three of you go in. It's been a while. I've since. never played Destiny, Destiny, sorry. Um, well, you go in, and the, the, they have a lot of jumping puzzles in Destiny 2. And um, especially in the raids or in some of the... Oh, what's it called? What's it called, Rylan? It's... Rainick, you play too. It's the... Um, where you go in with three people. The strike. And um, there's one where you have to jump across to, like, over the abyss. Like, if you fell, dead, you're just dead. Um, but you jump, and then you jump again, and when you jump again, the one behind you disappears. So Could what? Be. Yeah, so you have, to, you have to know, you have to jump, and then, like, quickly decide to go to the next one. And then, if you're, if you're heading to the wrong direction, you got to time it to get right back again. So we could do something like that, where these, like you said, these concentric circles, these discs are just floating. You know, in World of Warcraft, where you you could go in Pandera and get those um, that mount that's a that's a floating disc with the clouds below it. Yep. Yep. The Nimbus, the the uh, the, yeah. the dragon Dragon Ball yeah, yeah, Z yeah. Nimbus. Yes. So you get those, and they're appearing the the ten the the ten of them, and they represent each door, and that's where you need to get to. So mm -hmm. but before that, there are these constantly flickering in and out um plot like either islands of land or oh maybe there's some uh, on the way toward oh this is even better on the way toward the uh earth and elemental one there are islands like floating islands that's the earth and on the way to the water ones there are waves like constant waves just gently lapping like in the like a little group like constantly or maybe water spheres works for me sure and then sure. on the way to the air once there's clouds and then to get to the <coughs> yeah. i'm so excited i'm choking <laughs> and then to the fire ones there would be like um maybe magma that they have to figure out how to to get to the, the fire hot magma hot magma so all right concentric circles I, I wish i could um i wish i could draw this somehow on the screen i don't have a drawing program up and i don't have fireworks on this laptop but that would be great we could go in and just draw it out but I'll, I'll figure something out um that lead to each door um oops, i keep doing that surrounding the main proxus entry um 
the uh, the access to each elemental hall is uh, is not blocked um, or requires. Um, a form of like I'm gonna put parkour. That's not written correctly. Uh, jumping, jumping, jumping across uh, various elemental-inspired uh, landings. That's not how I wanted to say it, but you know something like that. Yeah, Re Renek has died there a lot at that one I'm talking about. Um, Crows died too, but don't tell him I said that. I'm pretty good at that one. <laughs> <laughs> That's the yeah. only one I'm good at. <laughs> Thank God you didn't say that on a recorded meeting. I know, I know. No one will say this. Don't worry about it. It's our secret. Ever. No one will ever know. Uh, yeah, yes. I'm sorry. He brings up a very good eight. point. Yes, you're right. We're done. We're done for the night. Thank you so much for joining us. Um, stay tuned for, um, I guess we're going to raid Rainick. He's coming up next. Um, thanks, Joe. This was fun. It was. It was a lot of fun. Thank you. And we didn't drop. Second week in a row. No one got dropped. It's because I didn't talk, didn't, didn't talk crap about the, um, about the Atlanta Braves. That's true. It's probably That was probably what it was. Um, okay, so we're gonna raid Rainick. Let's uh, let's do our dab. I was told I had to dab from my interview today. I was told I had to dab on the stream. Not, so shiny not. kiwi, that's for you. I'm, I'm not gonna do that. Nope. Sorry. Sorry. I suck at it, and my 14 year old, even though she doesn't know I'm doing it, is quivering somewhere in the other room, going, oh, "I think mom just dabbed." <laughs> She's just involuntarily. Went, Ugh. Ugh, something just happened. <laughs> uh, Tuesday, we start a brand new build with uh, Kajari's Curious Crafts. I am gonna be working on the flail snail, that's what I meant to put on the screen today earlier, and I forgot. Uh, the flail snail terrain that I am going to give away if we reach our goal of, I think it's 100. 50. Well, it's 50, no, it's 25 Twitch subs, which by the way, we're at 16. I wanna give a shout out to my latest Twitch sub, who actually, no, we're one closer. We're one closer because yeah, T Grow gave one tonight, so we're at 17. We need eight more to reach that goal. And the YouTube subs are easy. Just go to subscribe on YouTube. It doesn't cost anything. Uh, that link is probably going to be thrown up by Ryland any second now. Hint, hint. And um, yeah, so once those are met, this flail snail terrain I'm making starting Tuesday will be given away to somebody who types in exclamation point snail, I mean flail. Let me just put the giveaway. But you have to type that exclamation flail. I mean, smell all yeah, one word. But you can it. call me Mimsy. There you go. There's the thank you, Rylan. Um, there is the giveaway. So enter that if you are in the in the chat right now. You have to be you don't have to be present to win, but you have to mm. be listening to know that code. I'm not giving that code away to people who are not paying any attention or yeah. for yeah. So you can't like you can't Twitter this. You have to just watch the show, and that means that I know that you're, even if you're lurking, that's fine. Just type in exclamation point flail, and you'll be eligible to win once we hit that goal. Um, Joe. Yes. Oh, are hi, you playing hi. tonight? Are you playing Riff and Rabble? Tell us about what's going on in Riff and Rabble tonight. We are playing Riff and Rabble. The the, uh, the the crew of intrepid adventurers have finally gotten to water deep after awesome. after defending ourselves from the wrath of the uh, the sea hags twice in a row. Now we're gonna do we're gonna do a lot of talk. We're gonna do a lot of uh, role play. There's gonna be some uh, some cursory shopping, I'm sure, but nothing nothing crazy. And uh, we should we should probably definitely delve more into our characters' backstory because I think. Three of the four of them have history in Waterdeep, awesome. and that's where we are going. That's going to be so much fun. Well, thank you, Joe, for joining me once again, and thank you all out there for joining us. Um, we're going to raid Rainick, so let's have our dab going. I'm going to put it to the thank you screen so we have a nice closeout of the of the. Oh, stream. and that, that, that Riff and Rabble is tonight at 10 o'clock. Yeah, Eastern. 10 o'clock East. Yeah, right here Twitch. on Twitch. Twitch.tv slash Riff and Rabble. Exactly. Um... 
next Friday we will not be doing three sheets one shot. Uh, it's a four day weekend for us here and I'll be probably playing video games all day with my husband on Friday so we're not going to interrupt that at all. So we're going to have a nice four day weekend so enjoy your 4th of July, drink responsibly. Um, Deb? Yes, 10 Eastern, yep. Yes, 10 East. Thank you. All right, so let's go to our... Um... Oh, joy. Can't wait, Ryland. Thanks. Thank Looks see. so forward to that. <laughs> All right. Uh, Ryland's on uh, playing D&D &D tomorrow night on Saturday. I'm going to return the favor there then. There you go. All right, so let's go to our thank you screen, and we'll go over, and I have to open up the other thing. And... Uh... <laughs> Oh, oh, we need to do the we need to do the Mimsy dab. Let me put that. Yeah, put the Mimsy dab in there. I have to remember what I'm doing here. On uh, to open up my Twitch and raid. All right, let's get our raid in here. Nope, that's completely no. That's no, no, no. It's one too many. It's one it's too one many. It's one too many on the left. We're close. All right, let's go. Let's raid Rainick. Thank you guys. Have a good night. Well, I guess I can't do it right. <laughs> You're getting there.